Thank you, Madam President. I am proud that the United Kingdom was one of the founding members of the European Convention of Human Rights. This was designed to protect fundamental human rights, the right to life, the right not to be tortured, the right to a fair trial. The Convention has noble aims and my group supports them, but we do not support the conduct of the European Court of Human Rights. Far too often, the Court departs from its role of upholding fundamental rights and interferes with how democratic governments govern themselves. The recent decision to prevent the UK deporting Abu Qatada is one example. The demand of the court that prisoners are given the right to vote is another. Such judicial activism brings the court into disrepute. It must be reformed, with most cases dealt with at a national level, and national courts given a greater margin of appreciation for making decisions. Madam President, my group is committed to protecting human rights, but we do not believe that the EU should sign the Convention. Given that every member state is already a signatory to the Convention, what benefit is there in the EU signing as well? It seems to me that the chief beneficiary is the EU itself, which gets to use its new legal identity granted by the Treaty of Lisbon. This is an opportunity for the EU to strut on the world stage and make very little difference to human rights. And what difference it does make will be negative. We will have two courts adjudicating within the EU, introducing competing jurisdictions which will only complicate matters. And it also raises the issue of the EU itself having a role in future reform of the Court of Human Rights. Involving the EU is a recipe for ensuring that no further reforms ever take place. I would urge colleagues here and in Westminster to think again before granting the EU more influence that we will live to regret. Uh, Mr. Fox, do you accept the blue card uh, from uh, Mr. Duff? Yes. Uh, I wonder if oh, Mr. F F oh, Fox uh, oh, would oh, recall uh, that the accession of the y y Union to uh, the ECHR is a oh, formal provision of the Treaty of uh, Lisbon. The, the clause uh, d does uh, not uh, permit any discretion in this issue. It says that the y y y y Union shall accede to uh, the ECHR. Uh, does he now uh, wish to uh, put the y y Union and especially the United Kingdom in breach, uh, in a breach of the uh, Treaty of L L Lisbon. Well, I would remind Mr Duff that the Treaty of Lisbon was ratified without a referendum in the United Kingdom as promised by the Prime Minister Gordon Brown. And therefore my position is that we should seek to amend the treaty so that that obligation does no longer exist. Uh, Mr. Fox, another blue card uh, from uh, Mrs. Uh, Sinclair. Please. Thank you, Madam President. Um, would uh, my colleague, Mr. Fox, he, he, alluded, he alluded to the fact that, this, um, that there were already 27 signatories to the Convention and that this would just be a pruning exercise or a pruning exercise rather by the European Union. Wouldn't you agree with me this is a further stage of federalisation and that in the, in the 2010 Conservative Manifesto it stated that it would repeal the Human Rights Act in, uh, which was brought in by the Labour Party. It now, if this was actually signed, it would mean that they would not have the power to do so. Isn't this another massive transference of sovereignty that his government, his party, will allow to happen? Uh, I'm fully aware of the commitment given in the Conservative Party manifesto. Uh, regrettably, we didn't win the general election. We're part of a coalition. And therefore, this is a policy of a coalition government of which 
the European Conservatives and the British Conservatives do not approve. Uh, Mr. Fox, uh, there is another blue card. Uh, uh, Madam Ludford, please. Uh, the last one. Thank you very much, Madam President. Well, um, uh, uh, painful as it is to um, uh, have family disagreements in public, will Mr Fox recognise that in the briefing distributed yesterday to UK MEPs, it was said that the UK government, and of course that is led by your Prime Minister, Mr Cameron, is fully committed to EU accession to the European Convention on Human Rights. Uh, the benefits of such succession are that it will close the gap in human rights protection in the EU, as applicants will for the first time be able to bring a complaint before the Strasbourg Court directly against the EU for alleged violation of convention rights, which you should applaud, enable the EU to defend itself directly before the Strasbourg Court, create legal certainty, and so on. So are you telling us that you refute the view of a Conservative-led government. I didn't disagree yesterday. That was, that was the briefing of the British um, Permanent Representative. And they don't speak for me, and they don't speak for my group. They speak for the coalition government, and we are a Conservative party. And we have a different policy on this issue, which we believe is far more in tune with the British people.